Hello and welcome to Work University. I'm Annalisa Felix. It's my mission to bring you nuggets of information about work education or podcasts where I interview people about their jobs. Consider these mini job shadow type discussions. So if you can call it work, I want to know about it. Now let's dive in. Hi, this is Annalisa Felix and today I am super pumped to be talking to Mr. Ronnie Gutierrez, drummer, percussionist, professional in Los Angeles. I am so excited. Ronnie, thank you so much for being here this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me, and I'm very excited to uh, to do this. Awesome, awesome. You know, I was, I was looking at your um, bio. You've played with people like Mariah Carey, Gladys Knight, Natalie Cole, Poncho Sanchez, Babyface, Jason Mraz. Uh, not limited to that list. Uh, we also have you've played for the Oscars, the Emmys, The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. Wow, that's quite a resume. Uh, do you mind wow. maybe even you know telling me a little bit more and filling in some gaps that I might have missed and and what you do as a professional day to day? Like, what do we not see on stage? What goes on behind the scenes? Well, that is very. I hadn't heard those names in a while. It's it was. Such a magical time with each one of those artists. And to fill in the gaps and how it came about is just by, uh, by talent, luck, and friendships mm-hmm. and God's grace, truly God's grace. And I don't know how to define that as well as miracles happen. And mm-hmm. I've been a part of a lot of the miracles that has happened musically in my life and mm-hmm. other people's. So, it's been hard work. My family has been an, an inspiration to me. My father plays uh, percussion and timbales. My sister is a very talented singer, and that has always kept my uh, tools sharp mm-hmm. and wanting to keep going, wanting more. Mm-hmm. And I would have to define it as who you know, your friendships, what you cultivate and harvest is being musical, mm-hmm. adventurous, and inspirational. So many of my friends have worked with uh, great artists from El Jarreau to the names you've said, Michael McDonald, and have brought me into that. And it's been knowing what to do, having my uh, gift really in tune. I once heard a man say that a great athlete does his best work off season. So if I'm not performing, I'm practicing. And I heard something really great the other day, Annalisa, that if I'm not on a gig, I should be at somebody else's gig, learning and really just checking out what's going on today, Mm -hmm. what the young guys are bringing to it, what the old guys still have to offer. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's hard work. And right when you think I've got this happening, (laughs) you get splashed with, Oh my gosh, now what? And you have to just start over and work harder. And then it gets easier and it doesn't. And then it gets easier and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's been a wonderful career of knowing that it gets better, and this isn't over. It's just around the corner that it's going to happen again, and that's been my experience. Right. So with all of these uh, on your resume, does that mean you have to have your Screen Actors Guild card and a passport that ready to go And because at any time that you could just get a, a job and you have to go? That's really great, great, a great question. Yes, I have to have my pa- passport updated and updated at least six months prior to the expiration, always. And I am a member of the Musicians Union, which is a local 47. Mm -hmm. And I have done SAG things for events and sidelining where I've done a commercial behind an actor or something like that. It's been really great, but you have to be, they call it Tap Hartley. One is a Tap Hartley. If you aren't a member of SAG or after, they allow it to go one time, but then you have to get your membership but those are great questions that for musicians that want to do more than just play down the street at the coffee house or right. singer songwriter performance now Correct. for a musician or for anybody looking at you or any musician on stage it is such a sight to see now after the <laughs> show is over or bad? <laughs> no it is it's so exciting there's so many emotions oh. i mean you know i want to talk about that also but after the show is over, what, what do you have to do to make sure you got that next job or, you know, the administrative piece or the things that maybe we don't think about, you know, um, taxes and, and scheduling and marketing, you know, 
Somebody just wants to come up really and play good, guitar. Yeah, that's really good stuff people don't ever take into a thought because all that matters in a big way if you want to be successful in doing this right and making a decent living, not just a get-by living. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is, like, on, when you're on a job, you have to really be present, just not thinking about anything but where your feet are. Right. Because it could, it, you're only as good as your last job, and that's someone's going to recommend you. Right. Someone's going to bring you in. Someone's going to see you. And that's always the inspiration whenever you're getting ready to go to the gig. Be your best. Take a shower. Some people just wet their hair and go with it. And that might work for some people, but some other people really notice, I want this guy or this gal on my show, on my job, mm -hmm. on my tour, on my session, my next session, whatever it might be. You have to be ready. Mm -hmm. So that means all your, your instrument has to be in great shape, not half there. You can't bring just some of it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, one guy said to me, over prepare, and when you get there, just go with it. And that's really being a great musician, not a great guitar player or a great bass player or a great drummer, but a great musician that mm -hmm. just so happens to play guitar, bass, or drums. Right. So what you're saying there, and always, always ask, what can I do for you? What can I bring? Is this good enough? Would you like some more? Always. What would you like? And mm -hmm. who doesn't like hearing that? Mm -hmm. How can I help you? How can I do this better? And that's very uh, rare in these times we're living in. People just don't know to ask that. They, it takes years and years and years of experience to find that sweet spot. Right. Now, when you're talking about always being ready, always, you know, if you're not playing, you're listening and learning. But then that brings me, you, you have to have your health in gear. You have to have enough sleep because I'm sure musicians are up late at night. You know, and, and you have to make sure that, you know, if somebody says, well, we got to go, we got to do this, you have to be up on it. And, and as far as, you know, healthy eating and, and drinking and things like that, tell me a little bit about that. This is excellent. No one ever takes this into consideration, but there are such strong factors in being a great musician, a punctual musician, and a healthy one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so important because you might get a, a booking of a flight of a red eye. And then you're flying all morning, and then you get to your destination. And instead of going to the venue to do a sound check, you have to wait in a lobby because they don't let you in your room till 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Oh, yeah. So you might want to just eat lousy food. But right. you really have to be uh, mindful and bring maybe some granola or nuts or a protein bar. Mm -hmm. Always uh, hydrate with water. A lot of people don't remember to do that, and it's very difficult. Oh, sorry, my Lulu was, was <laughs> inviting herself in this conversation. But in, And the most important thing is to try to eat healthy. When you go to an airport or you land somewhere, ask the concierge, you know, where's a really good health food place or, or a great restaurant? And you look for the clean food and you look for that. On an airplane, you can in, in advance a, a vegetarian plate if you don't eat something or you can find out what exactly they're serving if you have a moment and all, oftentimes whoever you're touring with or performing with they'll always look out for you because they want you fueled and ready to go so that's really challenging but this is something you said about paperwork and taxes that's so important and you really have to have people do it if you're if you're trying to do everything you might slip and leave something undone so you really have to ask people and invite people in your circle to help you with these things. Right. A, a good mechanic. You can't have a half-assed car to a job that's far away. Uh, what you're saying, you, you know, a, a place to work out in, a, a, an outlet to exercise. That's always really, really a good balance when you're performing or practicing. Yeah. You have to get away from your instrument for a minute and breathe fresh air, get in the sun, and do such things like that. Right. Good question. Oh, thank you. Now, let's switch gears a little bit here. What is the difference between being a drummer and being a, per a percussionist? Okay, that's those are two different roles, um, very important and very different. So the drummer actually drives the bus. They call it driving the bus. He actually sets the tempo and grooves. A lot of people don't know harmonics and uh, chordal structures, but they know a pocket. They know a groove. They know a feel. So that's the drummer's role. 
and he has to definitely support the vocalist or the artist that he's performing with, whether it be a, a pianist, a guitarist, or a saxophone player, again, like a vocalist. So that's what he does. He keeps the tempo right. He can make the, the group dynamically uh, loud, or he can crescendo or decrescendo the music in any which way. So the percussionist role is colors and, and that little feel of, uh, how can I say it? I, I like sweet, call it sweeteners. You put sweeteners on a song like wind chimes or little blocks or a tambourine in a chorus or the congas or timbales right when it's needed to accent maybe hits and, 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 and layer up the groove mm-hmm. and bring that back to feel something that we grew up listening to. You hear a bongos or congas. It's just really a great role, but it's always very challenging because drummers don't always get a chance, <clears throat> excuse me, to play with percussionists. So it's very different for a percussionist uh, not hearing what the drummer's going to do either because they're both different roles that have to intertwine with each other by really listening and knowing what each role has to do mm-hmm. musically mm-hmm. and most importantly because a drummer might take a fill where maybe a percussionist, and this is, I'm getting to the nitty gritty and the nuts and bolts of it. A percussionist Let's do it. might, <laughs> yeah, a percussionist might really have that forefront of color and a drummer might just be used to not hearing him and just do his thing oh. and play a fill right over him. It's happened so many times. And so I play drums and I play percussion. I make a, a, a lot of money doing sessions playing percussion because a lot of people just don't have money for live performance anymore for percussion. So I have to to really uh, navigate, and I play a lot of drums. So doing that, and having said that, you have to listen and hear what's going on around you at every phrase around the corner of some chorus, an outro, a verse. And it, it's very important musically to not uh, override drum chair when a percussionist is playing. And it's also very important that a percussionist doesn't overplay because they get excited and they want to trinkle here and bring the colors there and sweeten that and fill in there. It's very, 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 very challenging if a guy doesn't know what he's doing and you're, you're not used to hearing that and he's brought in. Mm-hmm. So um, those are good questions. Right, right. Okay. So you, did you start, you started out like around 12 years old. You come from a mu- uh, musical family. Did you start out as a drummer or as a percussionist or did it all just kind of mesh in at the same time? That's a, that's, I try to remember that because I say 12 is when I first started playing. When I was at school, I was four. Mm-hmm. And my father played uh, timbales and conga and drum set. So I think the very first thing I did was play a little percussion. And then I started out on the drum set. And then I, I got away from the drum set to do a lot of percussion because it's, there's a lot of things you have to play correctly, whether it's Afro Cuban percussion or Brazilian percussion or R&B percussion. They're not all linked and, and, and clumped together. They all have their own voice. So you can't just play one thing for every genre of music. It's very, mm-hmm. very, very um, refined, if I, if I could say that. And drumming has always just been my passion. I love, I love it's from the ground up. Drums is from the ground up. Percussion is colors coming down on the music, which is really beautiful. Too. Oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Wow. So in your in your journey, once you became an adult and you're playing more professionally, were there any roadblocks that that you can uh, tell us about that that you had to uh, overcome, or maybe uh, something good for a musician to know, somebody who wants to get into this business? Uh, roadblocks. They're everywhere. They call we I call them gatekeepers, mm-hmm. where you want to get on a on a in a circle or in a camp of a musical situation. And there's somebody that knows somebody else, but you're, you know, you would be perfect for that job and you just, your tenacity wants to bring you to that and you just don't give up on it. There's always a gatekeeper and you cannot, you cannot let yourself crash and burn over not getting the job or a particular musical situation you really think you should be doing. Right when you think it's going to happen, nothing is what it seems. And right when you think, it's not going to happen. Nothing is what it seems. I remember, I'm going to just share with you this little story real quick. I mm-hmm. had this friend named Steve Russell who was a guitar player, and he was really great. And he asked me when I was first where I was living in Orange County at this particular time. I was very young, right out of high school. And he said, 
can you give me a ride to Knott's Berry Farm? I'm auditioning for the summer concerts on the, at the park at Knott's Berry Farm. And I said, sure. His car wasn't working. I give him a ride. And I'm in the bleachers waiting for him to audition. And the drummer didn't show up to help his audition along. There was a, a keyboard player, a guitar player, a bass player, but no drummer. And he said, well, we are going to have to come back tomorrow or next week. He said, no, 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 my friend plays drums. Can he help me through the audition? And I called me over. I played a swing groove, a country beat. I'll never forget. And an R&B backbeat uh, groove. And so we're walking away and they said, hey. And I said, Steve, they're calling you. He goes, no, 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 you. And they offered me the job for the summer. And they what? Friend. Yeah, and that and that in turn changed my whole life from there. It just and I had I never saw that coming. I had no idea that 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 even existed. But so and that just led me to the East Coast and New York and Boston, traveling with different shows and different artists. So you never know. You mm-hmm. you always have to be ready, and you never know what might be around the corner. Wow, that is a great story, Ronnie. Now, what do you say to the person who always has a deep inner desire to play music but is always just afraid to give it a try? Hmm. Well, that's me. <laughs> what? Even after playing. Yeah, sure. We're, I'm How only so? human. I'm, a, I'm only human. And sometimes yeah. I, 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 in my job in music, you have to make it feel good. You have to bring the right feel. Mm-hmm. You have to capture the feeling. So how do you turn that off? It's so hard. So it's hard not to feel everything and even emotion Mm -hmm. when you're off and on the stage. It's hard. How do you, who teaches you to channel that off and on? It's very, very challenging. So when you, when you're really trying to to decide what should I do, should I do this or what, you got to go for it because it'll define what you are going to do or what you're not going to do. And you'll know it in your core. Right. You really will. You know, that's so interesting because when, when I think about, concerts that I've seen or shows or even, you know, small clubs, as an audience member, I don't think about, hmm, maybe that person's fighting with somebody in their life right now, or maybe they just, you know, had a fender bender or whatever, because they bring it and you don't know what's happening. And and maybe on their end, they could probably have all these things going on that we don't even know about, you know? So how do you, how do you make, flip that switch and just or, as you know, flip it on and, and turn it on, I guess. How does that work? Well, it, it's experience. You have to, when you're in it, you just have to know this is what you're you're doing. Mm-hmm. I, I know a little short story here of Buddy Rich. Everyone knows the great Buddy Rich that has, is no longer with us, but yet he is. This bass player friend of mine that I, that I had, was living in a complex with in the Valley said he the last, one of the last jobs Buddy Rich had, he was on these these health kicks and he w- was passing out right before a show and two guys were dragging him to the stage and his feet were being just dragged along. He wasn't even awake and they were shoving honey and they were shoving uh, sugar in him to get him awake and slapping his face. And my friend was peeking behind the curtain. They yelled, the management yelled, get, get on stage, get ready. And all of a sudden the microphone stated, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Buddy Rich and the guy, Buddy Rich just stood at attention pulled the curtain back and went on stage. Oh, played wow. amazing. My friend said he played amazing and he didn't do the encore. As soon as he waved goodbye, he went behind the curtain, he collapsed. Oh my God. So a lot of people <laughs> have this in their DNA. Yeah. They just do. And as some people have it and they don't know they have it and mm-hmm. you just do it when you're put in the situation, you just do it. You just do it. Right. I love stories like that. And that's what's always kept me alive. I'll never forget what this great drummer named Peter Donald. We were behind Carmelo's, which is a jazz club that used to just bring great music in and out in, off Van Nuys and Ventura. And he said a great thing. He said, you know, you've got to be nice and good to everyone because you see the same people on the way up as you do on the way down. Oh, yeah. And that holds tight. That's so holds tight, whether you're selling dirt or diamonds. Right. Absolutely. Now, I know you have a CD available, and I actually have it. Love that. And um, that is so (laughs) awesome. You know, and you you were talking about having a gift. Ronnie, I've seen you play, and your gift is so awesome. It's like because I've seen drummers play, but then I've seen drummers play. And you, like, almost dance with the instrument that you're playing, 
mm-hmm. and even throw in little things like you said the sweetener you throw it in you're like mm. whoa wasn't expecting that that's really cool and, and it really mm. brings an energy across from your playing to to me as as a part of the audience i've seen you play many times and it's just such a treat to watch you play oh it's so mm-hmm. awesome just wanted to tell you that and your gift is just wow. so amazing well wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You filled up all my jars. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, I'm going to wrap up. I want to thank you for, you know, sharing your gift. Thank you for, you know, sharing your information, you know, with with those who are maybe thinking about, you know, getting into uh, music as a profession and, and sharing with us some of the things that go on behind the scenes that, that maybe, you know, you want to think about if that's what you want to pursue. So, Thank you so much for uh, talking with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Awesome. So until next time, Work University, take care. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the podcast today. If you have any questions or comments, or if there's a job you want me to look into, email me at workuniversity for you at gmail.com. That's workuniversity, the number four, the letter U at gmail.com. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next podcast.